Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester four, routing and switching connection networks. This is chapter six, and we move on to chapter 6.2, comparing broadband solutions. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe a cable system and cable broadband access, then describe a DSL system and DSL broadband access, describe broadband wireless options, and in the end we look at comparing broadband solutions. So if you want to subscribe to broadband, you have the three choices in here in England. You have you can subscribe using cable through cable operators or using your phone line that is using the DSL or you can subscribe to broadband wireless with the wireless option. So what is cable system? The cable system uses a coaxial cable that carries radio frequencies signals across the network. Usually here in UK, uh, behind the satellite receivers, sky satellite receivers, we have a ca coaxial cable connected to it. You don't see them that often, but coaxial cable is different to ethernet cables. So if you have a satellite at, the, at your home, look behind it, that's a coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is a primary medium used to build a capable TV system. Cable television first began in Pennsylvania in, in 1948 by this person called John Walson. The owner of an appliance store in a small mountain town needed to solve a poor over-to-the-air reception problems experienced, or experienced by customers trying to receive TV signals from Philadelphia throughout, throughout the mountains. Okay, so this person, John Wilson, uh, he, had a, he had a business and they were selling the TVs and his customer came to purchase the TV. In, in his store, it looked great. The signal, the picture and everything great. When they went home, the customer started complaining because the TV wasn't, the signal wasn't that good. The thing is that John Wilson was using this antenna and it was like getting the good picture because it was receiving from the satellite. But the customers, they didn't have the satellite. They used to use uh, over the air antennas. And obviously, obviously the reception wasn't that good. So John Wilson invented the cable system. So he was carrying a uh, signal from his shop to the customer's um, homes. So that's the, that was the beginning of the life of cable. Modern cable system provide two-way communication between the subscribers and the cable operators. Cable operators typically deploy a hybrid fiber coaxial HFC networks to enable high-speed transmission of data to cable modems located in small office, home office. So hybrid fiber coaxial is like, okay, up to the, up to the uh, subscriber drop, there's a whole fiber, and then from the subscriber drop to the uh, normal or customer's houses, it's cable or coaxial cable. Some of the components for cable television, we have antenna sites. The location of the antenna site is chosen for optimum reception of over the air satellites and sometimes point to point signals. Then we have a transportation network. A transportation network links a remote antenna site to head end or remote head end to the distribution network. Then we have a head end. This is where signals are first received, processed, formatted, and then distributed downstream to the cable network. The head end facility is usually unmanned on the security fencing and is similar to a telephone company central office. Then we have an amplifier in a classic cable system called a tree and branch cable system. Uh, the distribution network consists of trunking and feeder cables. The trunk is the backbone that distributes the signal throughout the community. Then we have a subscriber drop. A subscriber drop connects the subscriber to the cable services. So cable in the electromagnetic spectrum. A cable network is capable of transmitting signals on the cable in either direction at the same time, so full duplex. So we have a downstream, the direction of NORF or radio frequency signal transmission, such as TV channels and data from the source or head end to the destination or subscribers. Downstream frequencies are in the range of 50 to 860 megahertz. Then we have an upstream, the direction of the RF signal transmission from subscriber to the head end. Upstream frequencies are in the range of 5 to 42 megahertz. As you can see here, 5 to 42 
a short area for the upstream so slower uploading and bigger range for the downloading so faster downloads DOCSIS stands for data over cable services interface specification is an international standard developed by cable labs this tests and certifies cable equipment and vendor devices this defines the communication and operation support interfaces requirement for data over cable system DOCSIS specifies two layers requirements so layer 1 OSI layer 1 requirements and OSI layer 2 requirements uh, OSI layer 1 physical layer for data signals that the cable operators can use DOCSIS specify the channel width or bandwidth of each channel technique which is how to use the RF or radio frequency signal to convey digital data for layer 2 or a back layer defines a deterministic access method time division multiple access TDMA or synchronous code division multiple access method SCDMA so DOCSIS is a standard that for example the if the like, uh, cable uh, modems they have to follow the standard to make sure that they do work so it doesn't really matter where you buy the cable modem for as long as they follow the standard it will work in a cable environment so some of the cable components for our networking that we have to remember these uh, first one is called a CMTS which is a cable modem termination system this component is exchange digital signals with cable modem on cable network a headend CMTS communicates with the CM they are located in a subscriber home so CMTS or cable modem termination system is located at the headend and this does communicate the data with the cable modems located at the subscribers so when you boot up your your modem it's going to communicate with CMTS first to download the files they need to operate then we have a fiber the trunk portion of the cable network is usually fiber optic cable this is the trunk that comes from the subscriber towards from the head end towards the subscribers and the node node converts optical signals to RF signals so node is actually converting fiber optic signals into radio frequency signals and then at the subscriber we have a cable modem a cable modem enables you to receive data at high speeds typically the cable modem attached to a standard 10 base T Ethernet card in the computer then we have a distribution area a distribution area network segment feeder segment is from 500 to as many as 2000 subscribers next we're going to talk is DSL digital subscriber line so DSL provides a high-speed connection over installed copper wire system two basic type of DSL technologies exist asymmetric ADSL and symmetric which is SDSL ADSL uses a frequency range from approximately 20 kilohertz to 1 megahertz ADSL provides a higher downstream bandwidth to the user than upload bandwidth SDSL provides the same capacity in both directions so same for downloads and same for uploads local loop must be less than approximately 3.39 miles or 5.46 kilometers for ADSL to work this is very important now with the main disadvantage with the DSL is that uh, there is a limit of the distance how far can you be from the from the central office so it has to be less than 5.46 5.46 kilometers for example if you need to phone your uh, operator or ISP and you want to subscribe to the DSL using your phone lines but first they're going to ask you oh do you have a phone line yes I do and uh, then they can ask you the address where are you located because from the address they will know how far are you from the central office and what speed you're going to reach because further you are from the central office less speed or less uh, bandwidth DSL connections uh, two key components required to provide the DSL connection first we have a transceiver this connects the computer of the teleworker to the DSL and DSL access multiplexer or DSLAM this is located at the carrier central office it combines individual DSL connection from users into one high capacity link to the ISP so we have a DSL transceiver this is going to connect from your home from the teleworker to the ISP or to DSLAM DSLAM it 
connects or it bundles all the individual DSL lines to the fast link towards a central office. Again, maximum distance between the user or small office home office to the central office has to be less than 5.46 kilometers. When the service provider puts analog voice and DSL on the same wire pair, ADSL, ADSL signals can distort voice transmission. For this reason, the provider splits the pots, pay, plain old telephone services channels, from ADSL channels, modem, at the customer premises using filter or splitter. They are known as a micro, uh, micro filter. This setup guarantees uninterrupted regular phone services even if the ADSL fails. The demarcation point is the point where the phone line enters the customer premises. The actual device that marks the demarcation point is called a network interface device or NIT. So for example, if you look, that's our demarcation point. So the responsibility of your service provider will come up to demarcation point. And the demarcation point is a point where you the the responsibilities of the company one of the company starts and one of the companies finishes for example the responsibility of the isp finishes at this point and the responsibility of the customer starts at that point wireless broadband wireless technology types what we have is municipal wi-fi many municipal government often working with the service providers are deploying wireless networks. Some of these networks provide high speed internet access to no cost or substantially less than the price of other broadbands. Another type of uh, broadband wireless is WiMAX, which is the telecommunication technology aimed at providing wireless data over long distances in a variety of ways, from point to point links to full mobile cellular type access. The WiMAP, WiMAX network consists of the two main components, a tower and the WiMAX receiver. Now with WiMAX is like, for example, you're getting a broadband, wireless broadband. You're not using 2Gs or 3Gs or 4Gs or anything. It's a different wireless uh, broadband. It, ha it uses the towers of, of the phone lines, but it does provide a wireless broadband. So for example, in here, one of the companies in London is offering wireless, wireless broadband. And the main selling point is uh, for them is like, oh, uh, why do you need your phone lines? Why are you paying for your phone lines? Because it's true, nobody uses the phone lines anymore. Or phones, home phone, they all use mobile phones. But for the broadband, because the connection to the DSL, they still need the phone line. So with the wireless, you don't have to buy the, the phone line. Then we have a seller or mobile implementation. Mobile broadband refers to wireless internet access delivered through mobile phone towers. Mobile broadband access consists of various standards supporting speeds up up to five megabits per second and then we have a satellite implementation satellite isps are used in location where land-based internet access is not available or by temporary installation that are mobile in satellite implementation we have a one-way multicast one-way terrestrial return and two-way satellite internet if you compare in broadband solution cable the the disadvantage of the cable broadband is that Bandwidth is shared by many users. DSL, the disadvantage for the DSL is that it's distance sensitive. Then fiber to the home requires fiber access network overlay. Mobile, the disadvantage with mobile is coverage is often an issue. Bandwidth relatively limited. Wi-Fi mesh, many municipalities do not have a mesh network deployed. WiMAX bitrate is lit limited to 2 megabits per second per subscriber and the cell size is 1.25 miles. Satellite is expensive and limited to capacity per subscriber. Thank you very much for watching this section. 6.2 comparing broadband solutions. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Asu Krasnichi and hopefully to see you in next video 6.3 configuring XDSL. Bye bye.